So now we're going to look at compound interest, right? We looked at exponential growth and decay yesterday. So compound interest will be explained to you a little bit in that little tiny video I'm going to show you in a minute. But this is not brand new to you, and I know that um, this is just kind of another form of that exponential, uh, got it, of that exponential formula. And it's going to look like this. So A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N to the N times T power. Okay. Where the A is the total balance. So in this case, we are talking about money. We're talking about, oops, balance, about a bank account or maybe a credit card bill or something like that, where the other one, we could still have exponential growth and decay, and one of them we were talking about a trash dumpster, right? But this is really used for um, money. All right, so P is the principal or initial amount. principal or initial amount. Your R is a rate as a decimal, usually talked about as a percent, but put in the problem as a decimal. N is the number of times compounded, and that's not total, but just yearly. So, and with the other formula, we were saying like, you know, um, every day or every month or whatever. This is all based on years, but then it's compounded a certain number of times a year. And then T is your time in years. So if you remember that half-life, that half-life was actually a decay, but that we had, where we had to play with that exponent to make the, the time come out correctly because we had to divide it by three. Um, the compound interest formula just kind of takes care of that in itself. Uh, but this is a common application of exponential growth. Okay, so there's not a decay here, it's just exponential growth. Okay. Most of the time, if you can read through the problems and you just have to know which formula to use, you will be given the formulas. I mean, even out in, you know, in real life, you're going to be given those formulas and um, you just have to know which one to use and what all the stuff means so that you can figure out the different parts of it. So let's look at one of these. This says, Dave invests $300 in an account with a 5% interest rate. If he makes no other deposits or withdrawals, find his account balance after 15 years if the interest is com compounded with the following frequencies. All right, so we're going to have to write down a little bit of information here. Um, we want to write down what our T is. So what's the time here? 15 years. So the time is 15, and N would be what? Number of times compounded, so if it's semi-annually, what would that mean? Twice a year. If you have a semi-annual sale, it happens twice a year, so n is equal to 2. So then we're going to write our formula, but you're not going to have to write two of them like I made you do yesterday. So a is equal to our initial amount, which would be, what, $300, times 1 plus, there is percent, so what does it look like at this point? 0.05 over what? 2 to the 2 times 15 power. Okay. So when you put that all in the calculator, now you could actually take the 0 0.05 and divide it by 2 and add it to 1, but really the calculator will do all of that for you. 2 times 15, if you want to put that in there as 30, that's fine, but sometimes those might be numbers that you don't want to multiply in your head. You can let the calculator do it all. So just go ahead and type it all in. Let's make sure that we get the, I'll get the same number here. You got something, Hector? You want to tell me what you got? Okay, $629.27. Y'all agree with that? Yes, good. So make sure that that's actually what you're getting and you're not just waiting for somebody to do it. And if you're not getting that, let me know so we can figure out what you're doing wrong because it's probably something simple we can choose. I'm not going to make you put this in a sentence either. Okay, because all, all these sentences are pretty much going to be the same in here. Mm -hmm. Well, it's money, so two decimal places. Yes. It's, it's two, like, officially the official, the real dollar sign, but sometimes it's done as one. Sometimes I write it as one also. But I think officially it's two. But I think either one of them is acceptable. All right, so I want you to do B. Okay, so you write out, write, the, everything I have written, that's the bare minimum of what you have to have written. Okay, you have to write out what T is, what N is, 
substitute all that stuff in there, written down, and then get your answer. Okay? You don't have to do any intermediate steps in there if you don't want to. It's fine. And keep tight on to see what you're doing. I would and then close those and close yeah there you go and then that has to be in parentheses too so like open parentheses two times 15 that's probably what happened is you probably squared it and then multiplied by 15 yeah you gotta have tons of parentheses there there you go okay what is t here 15. T is still 15. N is 12. Yeah. Okay. So fine, but that's what you meant. That's okay. So A is equal to, we still got 300 times 1 plus, it's still 0 0.05. This time it's divided by 12 to the 12 times 15 power, right? Jose, you got a number? All right, y'all agree with that? Yes, six hundred and thirty-four dollars and eleven cents. If you did not get that, here's what you want to make sure you do on this particular calculator. Now, if you have a different calculator that you're using, maybe it's going to act a little bit differently. Um, I actually have some that I've ordered that are coming in that are going to work out a little nicer. But here's the, here's the common mistake. The parentheses right here, once you take this to the exponent, if you're going to do 12 times 15 up there, you have to do, once you have your little caret top, open parentheses, 12 times 15, close parentheses. Otherwise, you're taking it to the 12th power, and then after you do that, it's multiplying by 15. Okay? Does that make sense? So that's probably, if you did not get it, probably what's happening with the parentheses there. <laughs> well, you'll like the other ones a little bit better. Okay. Are we good with that? That makes sense? Yes? Okay, so we're not going to actually work to, we're just going to talk about what the the little things down here would be. So um, if we've got $2,500 is deposited into the savings account, earning 8% annual interest, how much will be in the account at the end of 25 years of interest is compounded with the following frequencies? All right, so what is T here? 25. What is N? Four. Quarterly means four. Okay, we had a little confusion about that the other day because... Somebody said, well, I thought it was three because every, if the quarters, that's every three months. But yes, it is every three months, but it's quarterly, which means four. Like there's four of them. So it had happens four times a year. It is every three months, but it's four times a year. And that's what we're looking at there. Okay. Um, so for B, T is still 25, right? What would N be? 365. We just pretend like leap year doesn't exist. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to work the whole problem. I don't think you know. I mean, this isn't brand new, right? It's kind of plug and chug. We just got to make sure we're using the right pieces and you know which ones that you're actually doing here, okay? All right, so then let's look at this here. It says, when Amelia turned six, her grandparents opened a college account for, for her with an initial deposit of $500. The account earned 3.2% interest compounded bi-monthly. If her grandparents made no other deposits or withdrawals, how much money will be in the account with Amelia can access at age 18. All right, so what is what does T equal? 12, because they started it when she was 6. She gets to access it when she's 18. So T is equal to 12. Now, N is equal to, what is N equal? Bi-monthly. Bi-monthly. What does bi-monthly mean? Twice a month. Okay, now here's, here's a very interesting point about this. <laughs> Bi-monthly, twice a month. That's what I've always understood it to be. That's what it, that's what the intention of this problem is. So then somebody asked me the other day, afterwards, they were like, well, but by, is it, he said, is it two times a month or every two months? He said, it's two times a month. He said, but if you get paid bi-weekly, you get paid every two weeks. And I said, you're right. And so then I thought, okay, but I know that bi-monthly is twice a month, but it can't, but then it means the same thing as bi-weekly, kind of, not exactly, but, um, so I thought, okay, whatever. So I went and asked somebody else, like, what is your understanding of this, right? Like, and so I kind of got the same thing. So we Googled it. And you know what it says? And there's even a long article from Webster's Dictionary that bi-monthly can mean twice a month or every two months. 
And biweekly can mean twice a week or every two weeks. So basically, it's another example of the, the English language is stupid. And it can be very, very confusing. And so, I mean, even when the dictionary is giving an article, that it could mean either one. So it could, and you could argue it. So what I landed on the other day when we went through all this is that by month, the intention of this question and what bi-monthly has, I've always understood it to mean, is twice a month. That's what we're going to use for bi-monthly right now. I'm actually literally going to do a little bit more investigation. I don't even know how and who I'm going to, but there's got to be a general understanding that everybody has to have if it's going to be ambiguous like that. Um, you know, what do you use out in the finance world? Things like that. What does it really, really mean? Um, and then we might clear it up. But for consistency purposes right now, bi-monthly is going to mean twice a month for us. Okay. Well, but bi-weekly means every two weeks. Yeah, I'm talking about the, right, but if there's a bi-weekly, yes, because t in general, um, in general, just everyday talk, bi-monthly means twice a month, and bi-weekly means every two weeks. That is not the same thing, though. I get paid bi-monthly, my husband gets paid bi-weekly, so he gets paid every two weeks, I get paid twice a month. Four paychecks, he gets 26. Does that make sense? Because there's 52 weeks in a year, so every two, like every, every second Friday, he's got a paycheck. Mine doesn't come on the same day because it's twice a month. Does that make sense? So they're not exactly the same thing. It's just what's happening. So it can be very confusing. But bi-monthly, twice a month. So what is in? 24. Okay. There we go. I know. It's just life is hard. So then we substitute this in. A is equal to my initial amount is 500 times 1 plus my rate. What does that look like as a decimal? 0.32? 0 0.032, that makes a big difference, over what? 12 or 24? 24, and then that's to the 12 times 24 power. So let's all get that typed in, see if we can get that figured out. Michael Gutierrez, you got something? 733 dollars and 88 cents. Y'all agree with that? Yes, that is correct. So make sure you get that. Okay. All right. All right. Now let's work on the next one. So I want you to read through the next one, and I want you to go ahead and write down what T is, what N is, set it all up, get it worked out. Then we'll go from there. Watch your rate there. Make sure your decimal is correct for your rate. <laughs> Trying to sneak an extra dollar in there. All right, Alex, you think you got an answer? 750.57? 780? Okay. 
780 point what? 57? Sure about the 57? 58? Okay. All right, do we all agree with that? Yes, so we can box it and move on? We're done? No. No, why not? Because it doesn't ask for how much money. Very good. Tony would be the only one that would be wrong right now. So what does it ask me for, Tony? How much interest? It's, now, do we need this number? Yes, but it says how much interest will she have earned after 10 years? So what do we have to do? Subtract that 750, right? Because oh, this is the total amount. This was the initial amount. So the extra stuff is the interest. So that means I would have how much? $30.58 in interest earned. So. That is the actual answer. Make sure you read those questions carefully because, yes, they're not that complicated because you can just substitute it in and whatever, but make sure that you interest is dumb. <laughs> oh, memories. Okay, so let's look at number five. I don't know that we need to, well, maybe we should just so we can make sure we type everything in right. Um, it says, in 1990, Carter deposited $1,000 in an investment account that earns two and three-eighths interest, annual interest, compounded quarterly. No other deposits or withdrawals were made. Find the balance of his account in 2025. All right, so I need T. What is T here? Thirty-five, right? Because you get twenty-five years to get back to two thousand, and then another ten. So it's a total of thirty-five years. N is equal to what? Four, because it's compounded quarterly. All right. Now let's talk about the rate. It's in a fraction. Now we could leave it in a fraction form. That makes the percentages a little bit more complicated. What is three eighths as a decimal? Oh, yes, you can. Like, you can put, you mean as an improper fraction and then divide? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, either way. You can do three-eighths and then just put the, put the two in front of it, or if you just do three-eighths and then it's two-point whatever you get, it's the same thing and you don't have to make it into an improper fraction. Does that make sense? So what is it? 0.375? Okay, so since it's a nice decimal, then I can use it as a decimal. If it was like two and a third percent, it would be repeating and we would have to handle it differently. Does that make sense to you? Because if you round then, it's a bad thing and your interest doesn't come out right. But this is actually 2.375%. Okay, that's another way to look at it. So it's good when it comes out to a decent decimal. That way we can actually substitute it into our problem. All right, so then I'm going to substitute this in. A is equal to 1,000 is my initial amount. Then 1 plus my rate is a decimal. Is it 2.375? No, what is it? 0 0.02375 divided by what? 4 to the 4 times 35 power. Let's go ahead and type all that in. Yeah, be careful with the zeros. Make sure... Wasn't it y'all that I messed up on the zeros yesterday? Like I didn't even write the right ones down. It's easier to write the wrong number down and type them in wrong, and so just be careful with it. Michael Rodriguez, can you tell me what you got? What'd you got? Point, what? 55? Okay. So you got 2290 55, all right? Yeah. Comma there, and there you go. All right, good deal. Everybody got that? Almost. All right. Okay, so that's your compound interest formulas. Then we're going to talk about continuous compound interest. That continuous tells you what has to be involved. Remember? Yes. E. Continuous means that E is involved. So it says in some cases, interest is compounded continuously, meaning the account is constantly earning interest. The formula for, at the right can be used. So here's the good news about this one. It's the same as the one we did yesterday. Okay? Because we were already compounding continuously. It's your PERT formula. And then I'm going to show you a little 
one and a half minute video about E here. Maybe, except where'd my video go now? We've made a video about pi, the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. But there's a less famous, but equally fundamental number known to anyone who's taken high school algebra. It's about 2.718281828459045, and, and, and so on. And it was first defined by Jacob Bernoulli, but later Leonard Euler called it E, and the name stuck. Bernoulli first defined E through compound interest. Now, compound interest says that you get a little bit of money in interest every period, and that money you gained helps you gain even more interest next period. In other words, your interest compounds. So if you stick $1 into a bank account with a 100% interest rate compounded annually, you'll get $2 at the end of a year. If it's compounded semi-annually, you'll end up with $2.25 quarterly and you'll end up with $2.44, monthly $2.61, weekly $2.69. See where we're going? If you increase the number of compounding periods a year towards infinity, then you'll get closer and closer to E dollars. In statistics, it describes the most important statistical distribution, the normal. In biology, it models populations of species through the logistic function. In physics, E describes the exponential decay of a radioactive material. So while E may not be as famous as pi, it's easily as fundamental and immensely important. So that doesn't necessarily really, really explain what E is to you because you have to have a little bit more math and a little bit more other things under your belt before you can really truly understand it. But if you were in AP stats or you take stats in college, um, you will see the normal distribution for sure. Um, I would imagine that the biology example there is not anything you do in like freshman biology, but if you take AP biology, that's probably something that, that you would look at. And then um, the physics one too, I, probably AP physics, it might be in physics C. But it's all, E is one of those things that's naturally occurring. Nobody said, hey, we're going to use this number and this is what we're going to have, you know, this is my favorite number and this is what we're going to use. Um, it's like pi, it got discovered, it has all these relationships and so does E. So um, it's your continuous compounding formula, PERT, okay? Anytime you see continuous, it's PERT. So it says, suppose $800 is invested in an account at 6% interest rate compounded continuously. So that compounded continuously, ding, 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 that's your PERT formula. If no other withdrawals or deposits are made, find the balance in the account after 20 years. All right, so your T here is 20 years, right? You do not have an N because it's not compounded anything other than continuously. So we substitute into our PERT formula, A is equal to your principal amount, which is 800, times E to the E, what's your rate? 0 0.06 times 20. All right, so when you go to find this, where's the E button? What does it go with? What did you learn it with in algebra 2? What? LN, goes with the natural log. So the natural, this is the second LN will give you your E. So 800 times that, and then when you get your little exponent there, I think it opens the parentheses for you. Just make sure that you put your stuff in there and then close them. Right. Zainab, can you tell me what you got? Okay, 2,000. Six hundred and fifty-six dollars and nine cents. Do y'all agree with that? Yes. So make sure you're getting that so that you're typing those things in correctly. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you. For all right. So then to find the balance in the account that you know it's going to be the same thing. I think we can skip that one. So I want to look at number eight. But before you do anything on number eight, let's. I want you to read it. And we're going to look at the options. Fifteen hundred your investment account, determine which interest rates and compound periods shown to the left would be her best investment option. We have option A and we have option B. So I want you to just read option A, which is 5.5% annual interest compounded monthly. Option B is... And before we do any work at all, I want you to just make a prediction. You don't have to tell anybody. Put a little star next to either A or B, which you think is going to be the better option. 
and I'm not going to call you out on it. It's okay to be wrong because you're just trying to make an educated guess. And then we're going to work it out and see what happens. Okay. Now, um, y'all are sitting. Let's see. I'm going to number here. One, A, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A. So I want you to, whatever I gave you, you're either going to find what, you, what happens with option A or find what happens with option B. You only have to do one of them. Okay, so whether I gave you A or B, decide which one makes the most sense for you to use, substitute your stuff in, come up with the amount, and then we'll see what happens. Tell me what you got for A. Go ahead, just tell me what you got. It's okay. You got what? 1,500. Okay. So. Oh. Okay. Well, you still should, even if it was quarterly, don't you think you should have gotten something more than 1,500? Yes, yeah, something, anything, even if it was five cents, like anything. So, uh, here, let me see what you typed in. But it's funny because that's that's happened to a lot of people. And uh, point one is divided by even. That's weird that it's not even. Okay, we'll change it. I don't I don't know what you did wrong there. <laughs> All right. So Juan, what'd you get for A? Point zero eight. Okay. The rest of the A people, y'all agree with that? Okay. So. My B people, who are my B people? Are you a B people? Give me what you got. 3,000. And how many cents? 86. All right. So my B people, you all agree with that? Yes. Okay. So looking at those two things, let's think about your prediction at the beginning. So did, I would imagine, as usual, some of you were right, some of you were wrong, right? And some of it was a wild guess. But whether you were right or wrong, did you expect it to be that different? That's a huge difference, wouldn't you agree? And so having a basic, under, you know, you know, when am I ever going to use this stuff? This kind of stuff is like seriously applicable to you because at some point you're going to be looking at investments, even if you're not a stockbroker, you still might want to think about retirement at some point or whatever. And when people are trying to sell you on these different plans, um, if they're a good salesman, because they're making money off you, so they're going to be a salesman, they can talk you in circles until you're confused and you don't know what's what and everything sounds great, right? Um, but you got to decide if it's really what is best for you. So under having an understanding of what continuous means and what quarterly and what compounded even means um, so that you can figure out what would make the most sense to you, because just because it sounds good doesn't mean it actually turns out to be good. How many of you thought that B would be the best option? Anybody? Yeah, that continuous sounds pretty good, like, oh, it's always earning interest, but it turns out to be, I mean, that's about half as much. It's not great at all, right? So to be able to actually calculate it, I mean, you'll have the formulas, you'll have a calculator, probably even have something you just type it all in and give it to you, but at least know how to look at it and that it could be very, very different. So then we have to actually answer the question here, and so it says, determine which, so we'll say option A is a better investment. Okay. All right, we're all good with that? You can handle this stuff, right? 
well, and as somebody else pointed out the other day, that's if she puts some of that in and doesn't touch it at all. And now, most of the time when you put something in a retirement or a bank account or anything, you don't just put it in there and never touch it at all, right? But if we're adding money, that's a totally different way to calculate it. And so, so we can just look at the basically what's happening. So even if, you know, maybe you don't know how much you're going to put in over the 30 years, just the fact that you put in $1,500 and do nothing and it's that different, can you imagine what the difference would, what it would look like if you actually put that much money every year or whatever in there and what it's going to look like in the end? That's a huge difference. And that's, that's you not doing anything. It's just the account taking care of, you know, whatever you're putting in there for your retirement. So that, that's the truth with all of these accounts. Most of them you're not just going to put something in and never touch it. Um, but if you can at least look at it then, that way you know what's happening if it's at least a good investment. Okay. Are we good? Any questions? Awesome. Go ahead and glue it in or tape it in now.